According to the FBI, there are 30 serial killers active in the USA right now. And these people will have friends, family, and workmates. So, you may be thinking, is there anyone you know who seems a little bit off, maybe slightly strange? Well, there are some telltale signs that someone you know is a serial killer. Watch out for these signs, and you never know, you could be friends with the next Ted Bundy. I'm Charlie, and today we're going to look at 10 ways to know if someone is a serial killer. But before I'm taken out for giving away this info, why not subscribe and press the notification bell too. Coming up first, we have High IQ. Now, you may think that someone with a high IQ would do a really good job. Maybe they'd be a lawyer, or a doctor, or a billionaire stockbroker. Surely they wouldn't waste their life taking other people's lives. Well, that is where you would be wrong. Think about it, serial killers have to be able to take out a lot of lives without ever getting caught. Otherwise, they'd just be singular killers, not serial killers. And according to a profile of many captured serial killers, they're all very, very intelligent. Many of America's top serial killers have what is known as superior intelligence on the IQ classification scale. For example, John Wayne Gacy and Ted Bundy had an IQ of around 113, and Ed Kemper had an IQ of 140, which is genius. They used their intelligence to manipulate and convince various people of doing things for them. For example, Ed Kemper, who took 10 lives, convinced a psychologist to release him early. He somehow convinced psychiatrists that he had reformed and was now normal. That was after he took the life of his grandparents. So the psychiatrists let him go, but he went out and took 8 more lives. So if you know someone who's very intelligent, or maybe even a genius, then watch out. Next up is Shiftlessness. Shiftlessness is lacking ambition or being lazy. Despite serial killers often being very intelligent, they actually have a lot of trouble keeping a job. Most serial killers have patterns of getting jobs and being fired pretty quickly. They're not very motivated, often miss days, and are usually fired by their employers. They also don't usually use their intelligence in their work. They may use it in their murderous side hustles, but not actually in their jobs. And despite having genius IQs, they often work in unskilled labor. Or they just don't have any job at all and live with their parents. Next up is small animals. I'm pretty sure we all knew that one creepy kid growing up who'd mess with animals. Well, harming small animals is actually the strongest sign that someone may turn into a serial killer. If you knew someone who as a kid harmed things like birds, squirrels, cats, dogs and insects, then watch out. All of these things mean they have very, very low remorse, or no remorse at all, meaning they're psychopathic. For example, as a child, serial killer and cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer would bike around the woods. He would then collect various animals in the woods and take their lives. He even once took the life of his own puppy dog, putting its head on a stake when he was done. And Joseph Stalin, who I guess was kind of a serial killer, would take the wings off flies as a kid. You see, many serial killers want to control other people's lives. But as children, the only lives they can control are that of animals who have no power. Next up is antisocial behavior. If someone, especially as a child, is very antisocial, then this is a big warning sign. Now, some children do develop more slowly, so this is not definitely a sign. But pay attention if you see a child regress from being very sociable to extremely antisocial. For example, Ed Gain, who was the inspiration for Psycho's Norman Bates and Silence of the Lambs' Buffalo Bill, had no social connections. The only social connection he had was his own very crazy mother. And his mother actually punished him whenever he tried to make friends. Later on, Ed went on to take many, many lives. Next up is arson. Alright, this one is of course a crime, but it's still a telltale sign for worse things to come. This may surprise you, but many serial killers actually start off as arsonists. Arson is psychologically attractive to serial killers because it's all about control. Being able to create a fire and destroy something shows a level of manipulating power and control. This is one of the main things that entices serial killers to do what they do. For example, David Berkowitz, known as the Son of Sam, was a pyromaniac as a child. In fact, he lit so much stuff on fire, kids in the neighborhood actually called him Pyro as a nickname. It said he started around 1400 fires in the New York area, and he also took six people's lives. 
Next up is families. Do you know someone with a poor family life? Well, that is often where serial killers come from. People in their family often have psychiatric issues, alcohol histories, or criminal histories. And these people often have very bad relationships with their families or no relationships with them at all. You see, for many serial killers, their families are actually their first victims. For example, Ed Kemper that I discussed earlier took his grandparents' lives when he was only 15. And then after he cleverly got himself released, he took eight more lives. Among those lives included his own mother who was very violent to him as a child. He did very crazy things to his mom's body, for example using her head as a dartboard. And he even put her vocal cords into the garbage disposal. Apparently as well as her being very physical towards him, she would also shout a lot, so I guess this was his response. Next up is substances. Many serial killers will have a big issue with substances. For example, Jeffrey Dahmer the cannibal that we discussed earlier began drinking in his early teens. And by high school he was already an alcoholic. His drinking resulted in him being kicked out of college and then the military. And this then set him on a path where he had no jobs, no qualifications and he began to kill. And finally on the list we have childhood trauma. Another one of the number one causes of why we have serial killers is them having bad childhoods. They are often maltreated physically, psychologically, or both. And this is often done by a close family member or members. They often feel very sad, helpless, and scared as a child, and they want to instill that into their victims. And I don't just mean the people they take out, I mean all the people who get scared of them when reading about them in the media. This was the case of the first female serial killer in the USA, Eileen Warrenos. She was abandoned by her mom and never met her father. Instead, her grandfather took care of her, but instead injured her badly physically and psychologically. Eventually, she ran away at 15, and by the age of 21, she'd taken four lives. So, those were the ways to know if someone you know could be a serial killer. But now it's time to make your opinion heard. Do you think you may know a serial killer? Vote in the poll in the top right corner and let me know. If you want some more amazing videos, then check out my second channel. There'll be a link to that on screen in a moment. But as always, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.